Welcome once again to Profiles. I'm Richard Fredrickson. My guest today is the city manager of the city of Joliet, Jim Hock. And uh, we're going to get with Jim in just a moment. But I do want to invite you to our hosts here at Al Steakhouse. It's always a great pleasure to be able to share with you the fact that you can come here uh, seven days a week. And maybe it's going to be lunch with just you and him or you and her. Or it could be your club organization in one of the rooms here. The holidays are coming up. Don't forget the book for the holidays. And Friday, they've got the great seafood buffet. Sunday, the traditional Sunday buffet here at Al Steakhouse. At Hames and Jefferson in the heart of Joliet. You know, I can say that now because the, we're almost in the middle of Joliet. I think Essington probably would be closer. Yeah. When you look at the geography of, of Joliet, we're out in just south of just east of Keokuk, Iowa, right? Well, the, the interesting thing that, that when, when I first came to town, uh, even, even to interview for the job as city manager, I was on 80 headed west, and I saw Joliet next seven exits. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my god, how, how big is this place? Is this place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven, I did realize there were seven exits. Yeah. I wonder if you're coming from, uh, you're coming from the east or west? I was, I was going westbound. Okay. From yeah. 355, and see. then all of us, I see the sign. So as soon as you leave <laughs> New Lenox, it's beginning to be. It's, right. It's, yeah, I never counted right. those. Great. Well, we have Jim Hawk with us, and we've got some questions for him. We're going to share with you right now. And uh, one of the uh, uh, questions I have for you, because it's, I, I heard a story <coughs> yesterday about a woman uh, who lives in the downtown area, and for a variety of reasons, she doesn't have a car. And she actually works in New Lenox. Hmm. Do you know that she commutes to New Lenox from Joliet every day? Oh, interesting. She has no car. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was interesting too. Yeah. And then I heard the conversation on one of our uh, committee meetings I was in, in the last two weeks. Um, it was an outsider coming, making a presentation to Joliet. And uh, she said, you know, what's interesting about where you're going with this city and with, with uh, people coming in for business or uh, just want to enjoy dinner or whatever. He says, you know, once, once that train station is really set up, uh, you'll have trains coming in from Chicago so people can be in condos and apartments in Joliet and still work, not necessarily in Chicago, but, you know, along the train stops of the metro. Right. And which I never thought of. We're really fortunate yeah. to have, we're the only city on the metro line that has two tracks end in one location. Yeah. So the Rock Island and the Heritage both end in Joliet. That means you want to park your car as a commuter in Joliet because you're the first ones on. You know, if you get, and you'll get a seat. And you'll get a seat. That's the, that's the key thing on that one. Well, where are we at with that? Uh, are we making progress? Well, just uh, about three weeks ago, uh, or early October, the uh, we invited uh, all of the IDOT representatives, uh, uh, Metra, Amtrak, uh, Walsh Construction finally broke ground and we had a cer ceremonial groundbreaking for the new train station. Uh, they're out there right now uh, driving these, these piles up next to the train station so then they can dig out all of the soil on, on the other side of it where the new train station will actually be located. The other interesting thing is, is during our design, uh, we decided to leave the old switching station, and that is actually going to be integrated into a common wall in the back of the new train station. So from the ground, you won't be able to see it because of the roof line of the new station, but uh, obviously when you're on the platform of old Union Station, it's, it's right across the right. tracks there. Yeah. The uh, plan for that eventually is to make it a railroad museum. Yeah, it'd be a great one. I, I've actually been there, you, you know, up until, I don't know if they still do it, but they actually had hand crack. They had these things, these huge things that they were moving. It's scary that it was only months ago that <laughs> yeah. that was still in service. Yeah, yeah I, uh, <laughs> uh, he just retired um, here a month ago or so. Halleck. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he's a big train man. I yes. mean, he just loves his trains. And uh, we did a uh, show with him a couple of years ago, and he showed me that for the platform, and then we went over there, and I said, I can't believe this is actually 
you know, I mean, it was like 1948 yeah. or oh, something. That you earlier. Or, or earlier. <laughs> and uh, one of the other things is, and I don't have these numbers in, in front of me, but the, the traffic, the freight traffic, and the different lines, uh, railroads that use those tracks right. on, on a 30-minute hourly basis is just astounding. Yeah, and, and that was the real impetus for the project was the fact that the the metro line coming into Union Station blocked the freight traffic for BNSF and CN. So by moving the new train station to the other side, the trains never block that freight traffic and they'll be able to continue nonstop day and night. That's great. That's great. Let's go. We could talk, and I'm, I'm going to finish this uh, conversation with all the pluses that we have as Illinois' fourth largest city. I really think it's the third, but we have to stay with the fourth. We've got a new census. We do. Yeah. And the results actually show us about 800 people above Rockford based on the Census Bureau's uh, 2015 estimate, which, which was a 3% decrease for Rockford. I knew so. it. I knew it all along. I knew we were third, <laughs> but they keep telling, saying we're the fourth largest. But you should be proud of that. Just like you're proud of the Cubs' win last night. I know. you. Some of you didn't stay awake, and some of you did, but you're all celebrating. Uh, by the time you see this show, uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, the winter meetings coming up next month and pitchers reporting <laughs> in just a couple of months in January <laughs> and the new season just a few months away. Did, Oh, you didn't think about that. Well, <laughs> now you are. Speaking of fun, and still staying with that location, um, there's two entities going into that building that, I, that I'm aware of. Yes. You have the beautiful uh, second floor. I'm not sure what that's called. What is that up there? Is the we, we don't really have a name for it, but it's, it's always been a, a wedding venue yeah. for Busan uh, Catering. And uh, they've decided to give up the location, and the city went out to uh, get requests for proposals from uh, different uh, catering companies. And the Mistwood Group, uh, that has is out at the Mistwood Golf Course right now, is the one who's going to move in the middle of January. But the point of getting it awarded uh, in the fall was so that weddings can continue to be booked for, for next summer and next season. Yeah. It's a great organization. We've done some specials out there at McCrethy's and Mistwood Golf Course. <coughs> what a staff they have. Uh, it is just top drawer. Uh, great company and good ownership. And they're excited about coming to Joliet. We've got to get them on the air here. Uh, We're excited to have them because one of the promises that they made was that they want to do just more than weddings, but open it up for uh, Mother's Day brunch, uh, you know, different special events to involve the community and, and everybody taking into advantage of that facility besides, you know, a wedding venue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then on the lower level, slowly but surely, something's going to be taking place down there as well. That's right. Uh, on, in the lower level, uh, the city is utilizing uh, one side for a uh, police uh, mini station right there and uh, we also have IT uh, located in the building because the new train station is going to have numerous cameras video cameras live feeding into our police department dispatch center for uh, you know public safety but the other side is being renovated for a, a new microbrewery and restaurant that's going to go in there and also take advantage of that uh, there's over 3,500 square foot of outdoor patio space that they'll be able to serve on as well. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I hope that they're ready for at least the 2018 season <clears throat> of the Slammers. I think so. Yeah. We're, we have to put in a new HVAC unit and, and <laughs> this is kind of an interesting story. Uh, there's almost 10,000 square feet in there, but 4,000 of it never had any heating or cooling. It doesn't even have a floor. Know, it's dirt. I know, I know. It's where the old carriages, horse-drawn carriages, pulled up and dropped passengers mm -hmm. off to take the train, 
you know, a hundred years ago. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is really amazing. <laughs> so we want to get the HVAC in uh, before the snow flies so that they'll be able to do the interior work all through the winter. Build out, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're exciting people. We've received some emails from them on what they want to do uh, yeah. with the Joliet City Center partnership, and we're going to have some conversations with them and have them on here as soon as we can. Um, in the last couple of city council meetings, and there's some more, I think, scheduled uh, for uh, input and information on the uh, what's called the SSA. You want to elaborate a bit on that and tell where we're at with that? Sure. Uh, an SSA is the initials for a special service area, and the downtown area has had one for the last 20 years. The city center partnership is the group that oversees and makes recommendations on the funding and the programs, the facade grant program, all of the events in the, well, not all of them, the Chamber of Commerce right. is involved, but a number of events in the downtown during the summertime are uh, sponsored and funded by the uh, downtown SSA. And the city is looking to expand that by uh, going up the uh, east on the Cass Corridor and then north and south on Collins and then going south as well on Chicago Street from the downtown all the way to the uh, expressway. Yeah. One of the, and it's another one we're gonna, and that we're going to have here on the show, but, you know, kudos to those business men and women on Collins Street. I mean, in the 1970s and the 80s, and Collins Street was mostly bars and hangouts, and et cetera. But what a... Mostly family-owned, wonderful Hispanic businesses opening up uh, up and down uh, Collins Street. My favorite things to do in the summertime is to drive through there, windows down, and get yourself a taco, a burrito, uh, or, or just stop in for an adult beverage or something in that area. It's, it's really a delight to see the improvements in Collins Street. And now, with this added support and undergirding of things in that area, that's going to be just another plus for Joliet. It will be. Uh, we, we've gone as far north as just south of the prison wall there so that we capture the U.S. Steel property and, and a few industrial areas, but uh, the, the frontage along the U.S. Steel property has potential for a, a big development there. Yeah. And so uh, that would capture the additional income that can contribute to uh, furthering the economic development of Cass and Collins corridors. We're going to talk about that corridor in, in just a moment. One of the wonderful challenges you're going to have, <laughs> the city of Joliet's going to have, is uh, January of 2017, Joliet Junior College, the build outs are taking place now, the thing is looking good. Uh, there are going to be some additional people coming to downtown Joliet. Where are we going to Just put all few. those people? <laughs> so you have a study. I believe you have a study going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we do have uh, August of 2015 was the completion of the Camaro's downtown redevelopment study. And, and that included the, the recommendation to open up Chicago Street between Washington and Jefferson so that uh, traffic can flow from the expressway right into the downtown. Oftentimes, with all of our one-way streets, people get off the expressway and then all of a sudden it's like, well, do I go left, do I go right, how do I get here, how do I get there? Right. This will allow for, for traffic to move right downtown. It also includes uh, redevelopment of the uh, plaza, the Van Buren Plaza, and uh, uh, from the library all the way down to where the fountain is today, uh, the county has moved out of the uh, state's attorney building and we're in discussion about uh, taking over that uh, property to be able to redevelop that. Yeah. Redevelop, and one of the uh, recommendations or suggestions or ideas is to make that into a sort of a, a green area, a park, I mean not just a park, but a, a kind of right. A meeting place. Yeah, a meeting place. Yeah. Like Central Park in right. New York. Right. You know, that kind of That's place. right. I look forward to that. Um, you mentioned about the, the, the one-way streets and things, and one of the things we talked about just prior to this interview was the fact that uh, 
On the positive side, we've got Route 66 and Route 30, and we've got a lot of promotion with that and tourism coming in. But we have very little to do with those streets. We really don't have a whole lot to do with, no, with that's, state streets. That's that's true, and they they crisscross our downtown uh, in every every different direction. Uh, with all of the bridges that are up these days, the state plans to paint every one of them, or at least paint the bottom of every one of them. Uh, and and Cass Street is up right now. Um, and, and so it creates traffic flow problems, and, and if people forget, then it's like, oh yeah, now, now I have to find a new route to get to downtown. Right. Now they're, they're well marked, but it's just an inconvenience, and uh, a lot of the businesses in the downtown, including Harrah's, uh, feels put out that uh, their customers can't f get to the downtown and get to their location. So. We do our best in terms of keeping the public advised, what the status is, you know, with regular updates in the media yeah. so that uh, we know uh, the Cass Street Bridge, for example, as we're told should be done by Thanksgiving. And then Jackson's next. And then Jackson's next. That's right. <laughs> they're, ju they're just going to keep going. Oh, it's... So... You know, uh, if you lived in New York or you lived in Chicago, uh, you'd have traffic problems. So maybe it's a, it's just a, this is just temporary that we have here in Georgia. Right. Yeah, it's not right. going to be forever. We've had construction in the, on the Chicago Street, not construction, but uh, work being done by uh, different utilities, NICOR being one of them. Yes. And um, that's all for, uh, is, is that also, is there plans to, has it already been done, or is there plans for that fiber optics to be laid down there also? Is that something well, the, in the future? Well, the conduit was put in at the same time that NICOR uh, put in their uh, new gas line. Ah. Well, that's so, good. Yes. That's good. Um, one of the, I just thought of this when you were talking about the, the bridges. Uh, I don't know if, you've, if you go down Broadway or not, but as you're leaving Juliet, uh, that bridge has all been repainted blue and the sides have been worked on. Have you, have you noticed that from the railroad? I don't know if it's a railroad doing that. No, it was. Yeah. Yes. Now, beautiful. I mean, it's not it was beautiful, but I mean, what, <laughs> what, a, a, what an improvement. A, what an improvement is the word yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. So things are happening. Okay. Now, before I go to the Collins Street Prison, which is really kind of an exciting futuristic thing, uh, let's deal with Evergreen <coughs> Terrace. A few days ago, if I recall, mm -hmm. was supposed to be the date, November 1st. It's ours, and we get we get to do whatever, well, sort of what we want to do yes. with it under the HUD supervision. Right. But that didn't take place. It's because the uh, current owners have petitioned the Supreme Court for an appeal on the entire issue, not just the value, but whether or not the city can condemn the property and take possession of the property. Uh, HUD is an agreement with the city that it's, it's so unlikely to happen that HUD is ready to transfer the contracts to the city and uh, there will soon be a hearing on whether or not the court will allow the city to go ahead and take possession of the property. So as soon as that happens, it should be in a few weeks, uh, we'll be able to schedule, again, taking possession of the property. Here's my analogy. The Cubs are winning, and the Cleveland Indians tie that game up. Can you, did you believe that? <laughs> but after the rain delay, they win the World Series. After all of these delays, we will win the whole package. I can't believe the Supreme Court will rule in their favor. That's my opinion. That's not coming from Jim or the city of Joliet. Um, let's go to something really exciting, I, and I really think it is. It's, maybe by the next time we talk to you or in the next two times we talk to you, we're really going to have something exciting to, to share with people. But Collins Street Prison, you talked yes. about the the SSA going up to the edge of that prison across the street where the United States Steel property is, where future development will take place. 
What is the update on the Collins Street prison site? Sure. Well, uh, Senator McGuire and Representative Walsh for some years now have had the Collins Street Task Force where they've brought together people from the community and those interested in utilizing the property. So that includes the, uh, the uh, Will County Forest Preserve, mm -hmm. the city, the county, uh, some of the uh, citizens and residents in the area there along Collins Street. And uh, the plan is on the east side where the quarried lakes are, the forest preserve would take over that property. The state will carve out and continue to use the forensic building, but the east side prison and the west side prison I'm trying to work with Greg Pierbolt, the director of the museum, in discussions with the museum board to have them be the new owners of the prison. The idea is, initially at least, to have tours of the West Side Prison. Now, the condition of the buildings are such that there's only a few that you can actually go into. So any kind of tour would begin at the museum and then actually take a bus out to the prison site and do a walking tour on the site and, and then come back to the museum afterwards. That will be huge. There are 25,000 <coughs> tourists that we know of that come through on the Route 66 through Joliet. Some stop at, the, well, they stopped at the museum because that's how we get the number. Right. Um, but they're, they're looking at Joliet architecture. They, they want to go to the Rialto tour. They, they, they want to see Joliet, you know, from the Joliet Jake's kind of background also. And if that College Street prison opens up, it will be, and I've said this a dozen times, it'll be the Alcatraz of the Midwest. I think so. And we'll so. be with another challenge. Yeah. What are we going to do with all these people? <laughs> and how many more buses have we got, you know, taken off from the museum? Because it will be a huge, huge success. And, and hats off and kudos to that uh, Collins Street uh, uh, committee headed up by Senator McGuire and uh, all those folks who've been at those meetings and they're going to continue and the city of Joliet. Um, you know, 2017, right around the corner is going to be an exciting time for uh, Joliet. The, um, we're in November, next month, I think. The budget's due in December? Do you do the budgets in December? Uh, the budget has been given to council. Next week, we'll, uh, I'll be doing the, the review and presentation of everything that's proposed in the budget, and council will be discussing uh, you know, the operations and, mm -hmm. and how we spend our money ties back to the strategic plan that we did three years ago. My goal has been, since that time, to focus on uh, establishing goals and objectives on how we're spending our money that ties back to the results that we want to see in our strategic plan. Most, some of that information, by the way, this is another innovation of the city of Joliet <coughs> and it's been great. You have uh, uh, online sources and you have that really nice piece, that, I don't know when that comes out, quarterly, the newsletter? Yes. Quarterly. comes out quarterly. A lot of information on that. That's probably coming up here soon, I think, because we gave some information to uh, Peggy Thomas. Right. So we'll have our winter edition coming out yeah. very soon. So that's out. But also, they can go online as well. Where, yes. Where would they go online? To? Uh, go to the city website, and on the website, we also have a version in Spanish. And you'll see that website up there right now. We'll run that for you, and you can... That's full of information. Okay. and it's updated almost on a daily basis. Um, what I'd like to conclude with is, now let's just pretend that someone just to ask Jim Hock, tell me about the city of Julia. What's so great about the city of Julia? What, you know, I've heard this and that about the city, but you tell me about the city of Julia. Well, the, the one thing that I try and emphasize is that uh, cities are the same in terms of they have police, they have fire, they've got public works, we provide your water, we, we let you flush the toilet, and that's the same service that's provided everywhere. So what makes a city different? What makes a resident say, I want to live in Joliet? Well, it's, it's our superior school systems, for one. 
but I think it's also the cultural amenities that we have in the downtown and around the community and that includes uh, the museum, the, uh, the baseball stadium, the fact that our transportation center is going to be complete in the next few years, not just a train station, but a new bus station. And they're not going to be stacked up on Jefferson in front of the court anymore. They're going to have stations just to the south next to the commuter parking lot. Uh, the fact that, that we've got uh, so many jobs available and coming into Center Point, all the development going on around the community, but it's and, and if we have prison tours, that's, that's another thing that's going to be in our hat that's going to be an attraction. I think if we start tours of the prison, every convention that comes to the McCormick Center is going to have that side tour to Joliet mm -hmm. that, that spouses or, or you know, whoever comes with the person to the convention is going to just take an hour train ride, come to Joliet, get picked up at the train station, taken to the museum, taken to the prison, taken to lunch, sponsoring our downtown businesses, and then get back on the train and go back to their conference. That will take place. I just, think so. Just like uh, uh, they said about 10 years ago, Harry <coughs> Carey, uh, I remember him saying this, uh, as sure as God made little green apples, the Chicago Cubs will win the World Series. And what you've just heard here from Jim Hawk, and later on in, in a couple of weeks from Mayor Odekirk, it will, well, what are the signs? It, it will happen and yes. it will take place. It will. You ought to be happy and, and, and really proud of the city of Juliet with all of the amenities that we have, uh, the downtown, the Louis Juliet Mall, uh, Center Point, the thousands of jobs that uh, are available now in Juliet housing projects, the new census. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful things taking place here in Joliet. And we had the interview that you may have seen with Tim Berry at the Rialto Theater with uh, new shows, new schedules coming up. Uh, a lot of excitement happening in both downtown and all around the, the, the city of Joliet. And a new council member also yes. seated. Yes. We had her on uh, here a few weeks ago as well. Uh, anything else I'm forgetting? I know we didn't spend much time on, on the, uh, uh, the development south of town, but I mean we've right. talked a lot about that in, in previous shows, and it just continues. It I mean, does. It just continues. It does. Oh, I know. I, I forgot about the Hobart Bridge. Right. What's right. happening there? Well, uh, the agreement between the city and the state has been approved and is complete. Uh, we will be selecting a uh, consultant uh, engineering firm to assist the city in this project because it's the state is giving us 21 million dollars and they're going to give us 10 percent or 2.1 million up front for the engineering uh, of the divergent diamond underneath the I-80 overpass and then the reconstruction of Hobalt all the way to six. You know I tried to get Dick Schuster to go in with me to buy that corner 10 years ago. But you know, he said, no, no. I, 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 I'm sure it's still for sale. It just may be a little bit more than that price 10 years ago. It's uh, wherever you see a corner, you know, any place along the way. Uh, if you're young and you've got lottery money, you go ahead and do that. Jim Hawk, thank you so much for uh, stopping thank you. by. It's always My pleasure nice to talk with you. Jim Hock, our city manager of the city of Joliet. We'll see you next time. I'm Richard Fredrickson, and this is Profiles.